Hey gang, in today's video, we are going to delete Apex directly from our Salesforce production org using Workbench. So here I have my Apex triggers open, and the one that we'll delete today is this Apple Watch trigger, which I just created last year as part of a Salesforce developer class. So I know for a fact that I don't need it, which is absolutely the first step before you ever try to delete any Apex from your org. Make sure you know for a fact that your org doesn't actually still need it in order to function. We are going to start by creating a folder on our computer, creating two XML files to be housed within that folder. One of those XML files will contain the name of the Apex trigger that we want to delete. And then as a final step, we'll compress those two files into a zip, upload that zip file into Workbench, and then delete from there. So let's get started. Like I said, the first step will be creating that folder. So I will open my finder and let's create a new folder called delete classes, which by the way, that's the folder name that's used in the Salesforce Ben instructions for deleting Apex. So I will also make sure to link that in the description, but here's our folder. Now let's get to work creating those XML files. So on this page, Salesforce actually gives you the format or the structure for creating each of those two XML files. So basically we'll just copy what Salesforce has given us, make the necessary changes in our text edit program and save. So let's start with our package.xml file. If you scroll down and you want to read the instructions, this is the code that we need, so I will copy that. And then if you're using Windows, you'll want to open Notepad for this step. If you're using Mac, use Text Edit, which I will open right now. And then I'll just paste that code here and save as package.xml. And remember to save it in that folder that you just created. So here's the thing. If I hit save right now, yeah, text edit will not let me save this as an XML file because it's detecting the actual file as rich text. So in order to actually save this in the correct format, you need to make your text file plain text. I'm not sure if Windows does this, but it seems that Mac does this by default. So in order to change that, I will just click edit or rather format and make plain text. So notice that it looks a little different now. Let's try saving again. And in this case, I can save with .xml. So I will choose to do that. And just one thing to keep in mind here, the important thing to remember is this version number because this version number needs to correspond to whatever version we set up in Workbench in order for this process to work. So I'll minimize this for right now and let's work on that second XML file, which is called destructive changes. So this is the code we wanna copy, instructions here. Again, let's make this plain text. Zoom in a little so you can see. And then let's save. Okay, so in your destructive changes file, everything in between these two types, brackets, pieces of code, um, is what's most important here. So the members line is where you're going to type in the name of your Apex class or your Apex trigger that you wanna delete. And then this name line is where you're going to specify what type of asset you're deleting, if it's an Apex class, if it's an Apex trigger, or if it's something else, if you decide you want to use this method to delete other things. So in our case, 
I already know that the actual developer name for Apex Trigger looks like this. And for my Apex Trigger name, let's go back to Salesforce. Copy the name of the trigger I want to delete and paste that here. So with that, I'll save again. And now our destructive changes file should be ready. Now, hypothetically, if I wanted to delete 10 Apex triggers at one time, I could just copy and paste this line and then replace the name for each trigger that I want to delete. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to do this one at a time if you have lots of Apex to get rid of. So I'll save, close both of these. Now looking back at my delete classes folder, I have my two XML files here. The next step is to compress these files into a zip. And then I'll just rename this delete demo. Okay, now if you're following any of the instructions out there for how to do this, the next step should be uploading this zip file to Workbench. So let's see if that works. So here I have Workbench open. Here's the link if you need it. Actually, let me zoom in a little. We're logging into a production environment and for our API version, Let's do the latest version. Agree to the terms of service. So one thing to note, right? Like I said earlier, your API version in Workbench should correspond to your API version in your package.xml file. So our package.xml is actually version 55 and this is version 54. Let's just see if it works and if it doesn't, we'll go back and change. So now that we're logged into Workbench, which by the way, you have to be logged into your Salesforce environment already in order to access Workbench. Now let's go to Migration, Deploy. Here, let's choose our zip file. And then we have to check off a few things. So let's check off rollback on error, single package. And for our test level, let's run local tests. Hit next, here's our confirmation page, and let's see if this works. Okay, so in this case, this actually worked exactly as the instructions say. So here's our package.xml file, here's the trigger that was deleted, and we know that it worked because success reads true which means if I go back to Salesforce, if I refresh this page, Apple Watch should no longer be here. And that's about it. Okay, now if I'm being honest, if I do this in my company's org, I can never get past Workbench just by running my local tests. And that's because we have some old Apex in our org or Apex that hasn't been um, maintained in a bit that when we run those local tests, those tests fail and therefore our workbench deploy job fails. So what I typically do and what I would recommend is running specified tests here instead of local and then just enter your Apex tests manually separated by a comma. So if I go back to Salesforce, I basically have a list view for quickly looking at all of my test classes. Um, if you want to see how that's set up, basically just any Apex class where the name contains the word test. And from here, I'll copy the tests that I know don't have any issues that run perfectly, separate them with a comma, and then just sort of go from there. The number of tests you'll need will depend on your org, but I can get by using 10 perfectly written Apex tests without issue. And that's a wrap. So if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And for more Salesforce tips, be sure to subscribe.
Thanks.